Welcome back to the second part of the Let's Play series. I can tell already I'm a bit in trouble. As you can see in the background, this is part of my storage system. But if I turn around, you see the troubles. I've been a bit of a pig. So there are plenty from all the projects. There are plenty of random shaker boxes filled with random stuff and uh, yeah I need to get them into the storage area here so the first project for this episode will be a, a simple shulker unloader that gets the items into the stream which is then uh, putting them into the storage system um, this is a simple bulk storage system here on this side and then on the other side it is uh, I would call it the Tango Tech version of a storage system where you can have different items per chest but um, each slot needs to be filled at least so these two are connected but yeah I have no option at the moment for unloading all these chalker boxes so Let's do that as the first activity. Yeah, so it's already multiple days later and uh, I did probably something that it's a very typical beginner's mistake or I would say uh, maybe it's also related to the software I use. It's called uh, OBS Studio, which I use for recording. And um, I put in some hotkeys so I can start um, recording videos and stop recording videos and this worked perfectly fine for the first episode but somehow somehow the settings were reset and um, so I was doing this project and I was pressing the uh, hotkey combination for recording but actually it was not recording and um, yeah my mistake was also not to immediately realize it so I did say two and a half projects and uh, yeah there's no uh, there's no documentation anymore um, still I want to show you what I've done and explain it a little bit and uh, I hope then also for the next episodes that uh, we can do more stuff together and uh, I'll make sure that the video is running so for the Schalke box unloader um, I put an extra chest here, which goes into the hopper and uh, dispenser. Um, so this is basically uh, the first project I've been working on. Um, then we have a uh, detector here, which will detect when the first shulker box comes in. Turning this um, on, which will turn off this torch here. Off, 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 off. Um, turning this off, turning this off, and then turning this on which will then dispense the first shulker box. Um, so this is very simple, the first uh, dispense. And then when the shulker box is being unloaded, we have to come here. Also in case you want to build something like that at some point of time, the shulker box will be here and items will be taken out. And uh, this is then measuring the, uh, the shulker box, if it's empty or not. And if it's empty, this will of course turn on. Uh, it's off and um, yeah this will then turn on and go around here and give one pulse signal to this one here but also to this one here um, so that the uh, shulker box and um, the new one is dispensed but before and here as well is uh, um, The piston to break the shulker box and uh, yeah then it's cycled back into the system I had to put another um, comparator down here to measure also the content of this hopper because my system has uh, also some bottlenecks if I use uh, for multiple locations put items somewhere then actually these uh, hoppers may be jammed and if the shulker box is uh, broken 
uh, while these are maybe full right now then the shulker box is not sucked in and may despawn and of course we don't want any shulker boxes to despawn so um, yeah this is an additional sensor your farm may not need that or your sorting may not need that and um, yes yeah, so only if both are off then this turns on and gives a signal so let's try it real quick as well to see how it works and um, I prepared two charcoal boxes here and so this goes off so it's waiting now for the item to empty this should go off first because it's empty and then this one shortly afterwards and then the pulse is going through and the next one is deployed Also this one then should be broken then soon. That's it. Yeah, so far it worked fine. Um, I uh, was able to clean up my mess. And this was basically the first project and uh, yeah, sorry for not recording, next time we'll do that. And I will just put back this one block here, so this is closed from the outside. Whoop. Okay. So second project. Um, yeah, I was looking into 1.13 updates and uh, at the beginning I thought, well, okay, there's this Trident. Um, but then on the other hand, I normally anyhow not even have a sword in my toolbar to have more space uh, for blocks. And uh, I just use bow and axe to kill uh, any monsters. So I was like, okay, well, what do I need a Trident for? But actually thinking about it, uh, maybe maybe I can replace the uh, bow completely. Um, so not put the trident in addition here, but maybe replace it completely. So the second uh, project was to, in the snowy area again, to build a trident farm. Um, yeah, also not on a record is uh, I did a few tests on uh, creative. Um, I first tried to get some drowns to uh, yeah, trample some eggs, some turtle eggs, but they don't, I mean they sometimes uh, look for those, but not consistently and not l big distance. So um, I then, then went on to use a villager and this is as the same with zombies. Um, um, even from far distances, 50 blocks, 60 blocks. Um, the drowns are attracted by villagers and uh, yeah this is then um, one one uh, result the second is at daytime the drowns unless tracking a player or something they sink to the ground on the ocean and at night they at least sometimes come to the surface um, now this area here um, all this stuff is not lit up the caves are mostly but um, not the surface and also I didn't want to spoil the surface here with tons of torches and stuff so actually all these farms um, that rely on monster spawning in this area would be uh, daytime um, farms because at night I will just sleep because otherwise there will be tons of mobs here lowering the spawn rate of the farm so um, also the last farm we've seen in, uh, in the previous episode is uh, yeah all the only working really um, during daytime because then we don't have any spawns here and then the mobs will spawn in the farm instead so yeah the decision was to build a farm then for daytime that means the drowns will come to the ground of the ocean and um, Yes, so that's pretty much what I then built, is a very simple design. Um, I pretty much put just put 
put um, a villager in a box on the ocean floor and I also saw that the um, drowns they are very slow so um, I also flattened um, the ocean a little bit as much as I could um, because if they have I think they will pathfind the, the villager around obstacles but it takes them time to swim around uh, mountains and stuff so what I did is also flattened the ocean um, quite a bit and uh, then let's have a look at the result unfortunately as well the footage of um, uh, the recordings are not here um, yeah so I also so what we have here is a little cage around here with a villager inside bumping in a little bit of water just this is um, I try to make it a bit uh, more visually appealing it's supposed to be like some kind of underground volcano uh, fountain or something um, yes and what happens then is um, the drown should be attracted or are attracted by, uh, by this villager they come close and then they are sucked down here onto these magma blocks and they die once they are dead um, there's also one block wide opening here the water will flow um, we will have a look at that outside so the, m the item here goes to the side and I have to go quickly to the surface or maybe I don't have to let's go quickly down here so they flow to the side the items and then I have a uh, a simple on both sides a simple channel that puts the items together and brings them back into the area with the mob sorter system and then they are centrally um, collected yeah so two things were a bit complicated about this project so uh, well i think one uh, change i would do the next time is really look very carefully for the ocean um, ground i thought it's just easy to make all this stuff even but it took a long time um, so yeah if you pick um, your spot for a uh, ground farm pick it very carefully where maybe a lot of the stuff is already flat so you don't have to do as much work the second thing was to find the villager um, what I did is basically um, I made a pathway um, up to that place where I wanted it and I also made so I made this up to the um, up to the bottom so like a little hole and then I also uh, removed the water from here um, I hope you so I have a little hole here and what I did here is basically uh, so I got a zombie villager um, took me five to six nights checking around I walked up here it's a trap door open and waited for him to come and he fell down and um, then I gave him the potion of weakness and the golden apple so he converts um, I waited for him to convert with a block then on top to prevent that he uh, gets sunburned and um, yeah then eventually I just opened this block and the villager would fall down um, into his spot um, so this is just to indicate how I did it so pretty much I uh, continued this pattern down here to get the villager in and then I left the last block I left a water block which he is still um, hobbing in and uh, this way he fell 
directly uh, into the water with no fall damage and so this is the Trident, Trident farm done um, well at least um, in theory um, what I read about it is a bit uh, mixed um, if actually Tridents can spawn without player interactions and this is also to uh, test this um, because it's not me killing the drowns with a looting sword or anything it's they really just die on their own so far I have not yet uh, gotten a trident but also the spawning rates here are not so high um, but it's okay for me it's just uh, like a small passive farm but I will also then confirm the next episode that it works actually with I have gotten nautilus shells and other stuff but also that it should also work with tridents without player interaction but we will see um, we'll make sure and I will update you in the next episode yeah so the second project was uh, the farm itself um, and then I said I have a project um, I did a little bit of work here also to uh, beautify it a little bit like I said I try to make it look at least I think a bit better than just uh, pure cobblestone blocks or something and I also did some terraforming here um, from the mob sorting system that it doesn't look um, as squarey anymore so I terraformed this area a little bit to look at make it look more uh, where are we here to make it look a little bit more natural okay that's pretty much it for this um, episode and uh, thank you very much for watching see you next time <laughs>